On Wednesday, the Ryzen 7 9700X reviews dropped, and for the most part, it wasn't great news for AMD. The 9700X launched with a $360 price tag, which put it 24% more expensive than the current pricing of the Ryzen 7 7700X, the CPU that it was set to replace. And while pricing is a futile thing if the performance matches up, sadly, that wasn't the case. And typically, ourselves and other media outlets saw less than a 4.5% uplift in performance, making the whole thing a bit of a nothing burger. So armed with some comments about how we didn't test using PBO or Precision Boost Overdrive from AMD, we went to testing to see if the 9700X could be redeemed with a simple flick of an option in the BIOS. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Oh, I'm never gonna be an eSports gamer. I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son, it is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. Now, whenever anything launches, we're always keen to get community feedback, not just on our content, but on what the general consumer space is feeling in regards to a new product launch. We went through comments, not only on our own content, but other websites and YouTube videos to see how potential and existing AMD customers were feeling. And what well, the main thing that kept cropping up came down to power efficiency and precision boost overdrive, which well, leads me to today. Now, while the points are valid, some were clearly made by disgruntled AMD users who maybe were just expecting more. And I won't be as bold to call them out as AMD fanboys, but I can see why you'd be frustrated because as far as generational uplifts go, well, it wasn't great. Couple that in with the fact that AMD denoted the chip as a X CPU, and I think it's just maybe led to some confusion. If this was the 9700 non-X, then I think the reception would have been a lot better because even from our own tests, at least at optimized defaults, it matches within a small percentage to the 7700X but uses less power. So that leads us to today and why we've set out to retest all of our day one launch tests with PBO enabled on the 9700X. But just simply enabling that wouldn't really show us much other than that in applications that can harness the extra potential through the use of precision boost overdrive, that things would be improved or well, faster than stock out of the box kind of results, which is how we've always tested traditionally in the past as it's, in my opinion, the fairest way to do things. If AMD or even Intel have features that need turning on, then they should be on by default if that's what they want reviewers to show and consumers to see in the first place. Now, to make it fair and considering that the 9700X is the evolutionary step forward from the 7700X, we also enabled PBO on the Zen 4 base CPU because, well, I think it'll be pretty clear that while PBO will improve the performance on the 9700X by a certain percentage, the same will be done on the 7700X and we'll be in essentially exactly the same situation, but with higher numbers, but a similar percentage uplift. But hey, I'm humble enough to eat my own words if that really is the case. So let's jump into it and see what the numbers now look like. To test, we used our existing AM5 test system with an MSI X670E ACE motherboard with the latest BIOS. We also used 32 gig of G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo 6000 MHz CL30 memory, and for all of our testing, we used an Inno 3D RTX 4090 iChill X3OC to alleviate any potential bottlenecks. We also used the latest version of Windows 11 and with the latest drivers, and as we're looking at CPU performance, all of our gaming tests were performed at 1080p, where CPU utilization is at its highest. We've kept other processors on their default out of the box results in our charts to show how things compare against the 7700X and 9700X on both optimized defaults and with PBO enabled to get a clearer picture as to how things look. Again, we tested the processors in a selection of synthetic tests as well as 13 games to show how things look. So with that out of the way, let's get into those glorious benchmarks. 
So starting things off with 3 d Mark Time Spy, and by enabling PBO on the 9700X, we do see an uplift of just over 1%, so not really anything in it. Though this does now put it 3% faster than the original 7700X results, though in the interest of fairness, enabling PBO on the 7700X made little to no difference. So the 9700X now sits 2% ahead of the 7700X, both with PBO enabled, which is essentially the same difference that we saw in the pre-PBO results, so kind of pointless. Blender actually sees quite a dramatic difference when enabling PBO on the 9700X to the tune of 13%. This now puts the 9700X ahead of the 7700X stock result by a pretty stark 16%. And enabling PBO on the 7700X actually saw the performance drop from 66 samples per minute to 65 samples per minute, which equates to less than 1%. So you could argue that the performance on the 7700X with and without PBO has been identical. This could be for a variety of reasons, including power and temperature limits being hit and therefore throttling. Corona is another example where the 7700X has no advantage to enabling PBO, while the 9700X, due to its lower power limit and therefore lower temperatures, sees a healthy 6% decrease in render time from its default settings. This now also increases the margin between the two CPUs from the 9700X being 2 seconds faster than the 7700X, now to 7 seconds faster. V-Ray again doesn't see a huge amount of movement on the 7700X, with PBO giving us just under 2% extra performance and bridging the gap between it and the 9700X a little more. Though the 9700X manages to see a 16% increase in performance with PBO enabled, which now sits at 17,986, putting it 22% ahead of the 7700X PBO result, and 24% ahead of the non-PBO result. So some pretty impressive stuff here. Booting up Cinebench, and again we see a decent uplift in performance, but only in multi-core performance, where the 9700X manages to push out a 10% better score compared to its non-PBO result. Sadly, the single core performance does suffer somewhat, but only by less than 1%, so neither here nor there. Again, with the 7700X, we actually see a drop in performance on both single and multi-core performance by around 0.6% on multi-core, showing that AMD focusing on energy efficiency may have been the right move, as the Zen 4 CPU is definitely hitting some form of limits. In Geekbench, again, we do see an uplift of 9% in our multi-threaded score on the 9700X, while the 7700X only saw a less than 1% increase by enabling the technology. What this means for the margin between the two CPUs, which was only at 3%, is now with PBO versus PBO, is that the margin is increased to a little over 11%. Now if only AMD could have this enabled as default out of the box, then the launch day reviews may have showed a very different picture. So speaking of gameplay and starting things off with a Plague Tale and enabling PBO, it does essentially, well, nothing for the 9700X, as it comes in with an identical average FPS and just a single FPS or margin of error difference in the 1% lows. The 7700X does see a larger gain of 2 FPS in both the averages and the 1% low, but even then we're talking margin of error of just over 1%, so again would be deemed as margin of error yet again. In Cyberpunk there really isn't much to talk about, PBO on both the 7700X and 9700X doesn't give us any extra performance beyond a margin of error increase of 1-2 to two FPS, and the same in the 1% lows with the 7700X and 9700X both with PBO enabled coming in at the same 101 frames per second. With ray tracing enabled it shows a slightly different pattern with the 9700X PBO versus non-PBO as it comes in with an identical average of 88 FPS with the only difference coming by way of a single FPS change in the 1% low. So again, identical. This time however the 7700X is the CPU that shows a nice uplift of 5% by simply enabling PBO and puts it in the same ballpark as the 9700X. So based on this alone I'm looking forward to exploring the overall average FPS between these processors. F123 on both the 9700X and 7700X do see increases, but are so negligible, especially at such a high frame rate, that no one would ever really be able to see any difference anyway, especially as we're talking between 1 and 4 FPS. Hogwarts Legacy sees an 8% difference on the 7700X, which means that the PBO result overtakes both the 9700X on its default values and the 14700K, so there's an upside. While the 9700X with PBO nets another 2%, so in a turn up for the books, the 7700X seems to see better gains and is now more in line with the performance of the 9700X, even with PBO enabled. 
Spider-Man is a title that sees little to no difference with just two FPS between the default 9700X result and its PBO counterpart. This does mean that the gap increases above the default 7700X result, but again, enabling PBO there sees an uplift of 4 FPS, which just narrows the margin yet again. Enabling ray tracing sees no real effect on the 9700X, now just separated by a single margin of error frame per second. Though the 7700X did see a bigger uplift of what's just outside of margin of error at 5%, though at this high of a frame rate, again, it's nothing you'd ever notice anyway. Flight Sim again doesn't really do much, if anything at all. The 9700X sees the average frame rate coming identical, with the only difference coming by way of the 1% low, while the 7700X again gained a single FPS, but being such a small variance, I'd deem it as margin of error. Being the fact that this game is so CPU intensive, it's clear to see that we're being limited by power or temperatures on both Ryzen processors with PBO enabled. Ratchet & Clank is another title where PBO doesn't make a difference with both CPUs, though what's interesting is the 7700X result without PBO, which displayed a stronger 1% low. Or could it be that the PBO result along with the 9700X displayed much worse results? Either way, Ratchet & Clank is a title that's always had odd 1% low behaviour, and this is something I've learned to accept with this game. Enabling ray tracing doesn't do anything to the numbers other than drop the performance as you'd expect. We still see the 9700X with such a small margin of error difference between the default setting and PBO being enabled. And the same for the 7700X, so it's clear to see that the game just doesn't benefit from any form of tweaking. Remnant 2 sees performance drop by 4% on the 9700X when PBO is enabled, while the 7700X actually sees performance increase, albeit by just 2%, which doesn't account for much considering how close the performance was on the cheaper 7600X or 5800X 3D, which performs around the same 136 FPS mark. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a very CPU intensive game, but even then, enabling PBO on the 9700X doesn't do it much justice, as while we do see an increase, it's only by 2%, so nothing that would make a major difference. This does increase the lead over the 7700X however to 5%, and enabling PBO on the Zen 4 based processor actually sees performance drop, but again, we're talking those magical famous words, margin of error. Lastly, in Starfield, if you hadn't guessed by now, we do see an uplift on the 9700X, but we're talking 3%. So again, those famous words, margin of error, and they come into play. And it's the same for the 7700X, which sees just a 1 FPS increase. So again, identical performance. So I'll admit, that was painful to talk about. The synthetics actually saw some differences, but gaming for the most part didn't. And that's always clear to see when we look at the average FPS across all the games and obviously the cost per frame. It's here where the 9700X increased in performance by a staggering 1% or two frames per second. So nothing of importance. Though it did decrease the cost per frame by two cents, so silver linings, I guess. Though it still sees higher than the 5800X 3D, which does give lower performance, but a better cost per frame overall. In the interest of fairness, the 7700X did see an increase in performance too, of a slightly stronger, but still pitiful 2%. Though again, this puts the cost per frame in a better position, but it's still pushed out by the cheaper 7600X at $1.35 per frame, which is 27% cheaper per frame. And we've not actually enabled PBO there. so. I guess if we did, then that would go down by at least two cents if we were to do that. All jokes aside, I wanted to make this to show that PBO wouldn't make much of a difference, if any, especially as I saw a lot of comments referring to how we didn't test it. But on that argument, I also wanted to take it one step further because, well, <clears throat> we're professionals here or at least I like to think we are. And testing auto PBO is one step, but setting manual max limits is another. So we maxed out the PPT, TDC, and EDC limits to the maximum that the motherboard would allow, and then tested again. It's here where we ran some of the titles again to see how, if anything, changes. In Cyberpunk, we did see another 5% increase over the auto PBO result on the 9700X, which now puts it 7% ahead of the stock 9700X result. So some gains to be had, but again, nothing spectacular and at a sacrifice of more heat and more power being used. In Hogwarts, we originally saw a 2% increase turning PBO on and then manually setting the limits, we saw another 1% increase. So take from that what you will, but it hardly seems worth it for what you actually get out of it. Spider-Man originally only saw a small increase in performance enabling PBO on the 9700X, while manually setting the limits saw that performance drop back down, with performance now coming in lower than the default performance of the chip with no PBO enabled. 
In Ratchet and Clank, manually setting PBO sees very similar performance to auto PBO and no PBO. So enable it, disable it, configure it. In this game, you're going to see no difference whatsoever as the trend continues. Lastly, in Starfield, manual PBO beats the default setting of the 9700X by a margin of error 1 FPS and performs lower than auto PBO. So again, just proving that PBO really isn't worth it in games, at least on this chip. So again, I'm now currently in pain for having to go through all of that. It's never a fun task reviewing or talking about something that has such close performance to something else, as it just becomes somewhat pointless. But you guys wanted it, so I was happy to oblige, because what am I if not at your mercy? Patreon link down below. In all seriousness, this is pretty much how I expected things to go, and it was, well, right on the money. The 9700X has an impressive IPC improvement, but in gaming, that doesn't equate to much, if anything. You gotta remember, IPC, instruction per clock, generally you're gonna see uplifts in the likes of Cinebench and things like that, but never in something like gaming, or if you do, it's gonna be very, very small. I still stand by my kind of original statement, I guess, that the 9700X is a bit underwhelming and isn't worth the money, even with the newfound extra performance of one to 2% through Precision Boost Overdrive. But beyond that, I still stand firm that other CPUs are better value for money. And that was shown in our cost per frame chart. So in all honesty, it's pretty black and white. And while I know the next comments will revolve around power efficiency and temperatures, you'll never guess what we have coming up next. So uh, yeah, make sure you stick around for that. Also, we have had some comments about overclocking. So yeah, let me know if you wanna see everything tested at say, 5.3 gigahertz all cores to see, well, if that does anything, because PBO, it didn't really, so I'm not actually expecting overclocking to do much. Maybe a slightly inflated Cinebench score, but nothing really beyond that. For now, that's gonna wrap this one up. The long and short of it is that PBO does something, but not much, so make your own decision. But if you wanna to listen to me, then what I'll honestly say is look at our launch day review and take from that what you will. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then consider joining the super special Patreon club. You'll get access to all of our testing data, exclusive behind the scenes content, and much, much more. The link for all that great stuff is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys. Bye-bye.